Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Sparkling Horizons. Today I am on my way to Mango National Park in New South Wales, where I'm going to visit the historic Mango Woolshed. This is a place where you can learn about the past and present of this unique landscape, which is part of the World Heritage listed Willandra Lakes region. To get here, I'm driving from Adelaide to Mango Woolshed, which is about 600 kilometers away. It will take you about seven hours to get there, but it was worth it. The route was scenic and I saw some beautiful views along the way. Before I go further, few things to take care of. Please note, if you are camping in Mango National Park, you will need to fill out a self-registration form at the visitor center at all times of arrival. The weather in this area can be extreme. Temperatures in summer frequently rise above 40 degrees Celsius and nighttime winter temperatures often drop below 0 degrees Celsius. There is no mobile coverage in the park. Better to download the maps from the National Park's website. Many roads to Mango National Park are unsealed and road conditions vary. Before you set out, check the latest road conditions with local councils. The entry points to park are via Mango National Park Access South and Top Hut Road Access. There is an entry fee $8 per vehicle per day. Fees are payable through self-registration envelopes outside Mango Visitor Center. Different fees apply for commercial tour operators and vehicles with 8 seats or more. You can also buy an annual pass. The Mango Woolshed is located next to the Mango Visitor Center where you can find information about the park and its attractions. The woolshed was built in 1869 from local cypress pine and used for hand shearing sheep. It is part of the historic Gold Gold Pastoral Station which brought mega flocks of sheep to the region in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The woolshed is an ingenious drop log construction, which means that the logs are notched and fitted together without nails or screws. It has a corrugated iron roof and a dirt floor. It can accommodate 18 shearers at a time, who used to shear over 50,000 sheep per year. The wool shed is still in good condition and you can see the original shearing equipment and tools inside. The wool shed is not only a reminder of the pastoral history of this area, but also of the environmental impact that sheep farming had on the land. The erosion caused by the sheep, rabbits and tree felling reduced the capacity for farming and revealed the secrets of the ancient lake bed. You can see these floors are slatted. There was a purpose behind this. Uh, the sheep uh, feces used to fall through to the ground below where they were likely collected for use as an organic fertilizer on the station gardens. Some of the information which I did not find on the National Park website, but in one of the blogs, which said that it was built by Chinese laborers. The roofing iron was shipped from Adelaide, which was 500-600 kilometers away, by paddle steamer. The shed was also powered by a stationary steam engine until the 1920s, when it was converted to diesel. After shearing, each individual fleece was thrown onto the table and evaluated for quality. The wool classing position in the shed was very important, as the price obtained by the station owner was dependent on the classer's quality determination. Different quality levels would have been placed in separate bins and baled separately with the station name, weight and the class stenciled on the outside. Oh, 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 oh,
The Mangu Wulshed is a fascinating example of how people adapted to the harsh and isolated environment of the outback. It is also a reminder of how this landscape has changed over time and how it still holds secrets and stories from the past. I hope you enjoyed this vlog and if you want to see more of my adventures in Australia don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.